as the Fuck Cups in Barcelona and Manchester, the EA Champions Cup in Bangkok as well. We've seen leagues such as the MLS, Bundesliga and La Liga all form part of the Global Series. We've seen other events such as the Gfinity Elite Series and ESWC. But all roads led to Amsterdam where we've just wrapped on the FIFA 18 Global Series playoff. And there we go, congratulations! So now we know the 32 players who will compete for the trophy, the massive cash prize and the title of the world best FIFA player. It all kicks off on August 2nd to August 4th in London. You can catch all the action across EA Sports FIFA channel. So we'll see you at the grand final for the conclusion of this dramatic season of competitive FIFA. Go! Okay. I wish I was there. I wish I could be one of the 32 guys. I mean, traveling around the world, it's got to be an awesome feeling. But to become the best FIFA player, it's the most popular sports game in the world. And now you can be the best player in the world. That opportunity could be yours if the price is right. No, I'm just kidding. If you're really good at FIFA, because 32 players from around the world, again, coming together in London for that new World Cup to be the best player in the world. Crown. Best player in the world. Unfortunately, it's, it's not going to be me. Um, hoping the audio is okay and nice and clear. And then nights pass and it's a three-story structure with the rooftop deck. I mean, certainly an upgrade from a water tank, that is for sure. Yeah. So who are the folks that are going to be able to come into the Access Lounge? We're not exclusive, so everyone is welcome to come up to the Access Lounge. Um, we have some games set up that we're going to have from our library, the vault. We do have water. We also have power for your phone. But for our Access members, we have a special little gift for them. Um, spoiler, but it's a fanny pack full of yeah. awesome goodies. <laughs>
Damn. Mass Effect 2, good choice. I didn't pay her to say that, you guys. We just are both big Bioware fans. Well, Lena, thank you so much for talking to me today. And don't forget to check out that 100 hours, 100 streamers, you guys. It's going to be amazing. So right now, I'm going to head inside the Palladium to get ready for the press conference, which is going to start in just a few minutes. So I'm going to send it 12 minutes till the press conference. It's going to be like 75% sports, but I don't care. It's the other 25% I'm curious about. For some reason, you don't know why you're playing it, Kugas? I've been working on Coop Life. Of course. Final touches. A lot of stuff. Kind of did. When it first came out, I was on a server, had a very nice LP set up, and kind of miss it. So trying to rebuild my whole base. Cool. Nine minutes. Did LP? So what's been your f your favorite expansion so far? Ooh, that's a tough one. What do you mean? Uh, yeah, I think cats and dogs was pretty cool because you got to have pets and a new world, and that was a heap of fun. Probably cats and dogs or city living, where you can live in like big apartment buildings and go to festivals. Yeah. Uh, for me it would be oh yeah, I kind of miss <laughs> logistics pipes too. It wasn't always server friendly, but yeah, I miss it as well.
<laughs> yes. I've never quite understood the appeal of The Sims on that front. I don't really think I want a game that simulates real world and a job. Uh, no. Not my thing. I, not my thing, man. Hey, Takisri, what's happening? I'm watching the E3 press conference at uh for EA. Because I'm I gotta stay on top of some of this stuff, man. I'm curious what stuff they have coming out. Yeah, see, that's the thing is that Minecraft, you don't have to be a farmer. I, I just, you know, if you could free build and it's like, um, oh gosh, what was the game called? Second Life? Where you could make furniture in Second Life and make decorations and sell it to other players and make real money. I see the appeal of that, but just Sims, eh. Yeah, Kugas, I do agree. That's why we have mods. So we don't have to be a farmer. We can make something else do it. And I might be a little too hard on The Sims. Maybe it is a fun game. It's, I don't know. It's kind of scary now that there's so much to it. It's not quite that easy to get into it now. Yeah, Linden Labs are super hard to get in. Second Life Economy was a little wonky. Uh, oh, Linden's, the dollars, are super hard to get in Second Life. Had a niece that got her first job working as a DJ in an area of Second Life. Got paid wages in Linden's, equivalent to U.S. minimum wage. Uh, that's weird. I used to know somebody that made furniture for Second Life and made a living off it. A little under four minutes. That's right. Playing the games. How about playing the games way before they even come out? EA has play testing available for you. That's right. You can be a game play tester. That means playing games months, sometimes years before they come out, and having the opportunity to help develop that game and make sure that it's the perfect game and the game I don't know. you want it to Maybe that's not that bad, but it seems like play testing would burn you out quick. Oh no. You don't even need to leave the bed. You could just be hanging out in your jam jams, testing video games, giving your feedback, and helping how these video games are made. So mm -mm -mm. slash playtesting. Go there, find out all the information. You'll make a couple of clicks here and there, and you too can be playtesting video games way before they come out and telling me what's coming out so I know all the secrets. Because who doesn't want who doesn't want to do that? I want to do that. So that's, again, playtesting. Go check it out. And now we're going to go ahead inside and see what Andrea's doing. I think she's, I think she's busy. She's a, she looks a little too busy for me. But look at all those people. Those people in there sitting down, hanging out, getting ready for the show. Yeah. Only a few minutes While this is starting, I'm going to go make some coffee real quick. And that is what's happening inside the Palladium. But I want to learn a little bit more about the Palladium itself. And that's why I found my man Dylan right here. Dylan. 
going, brother. All right. Uh, tell me about the Palladium. What is it about this venue that makes it so special and ETA coming back for ETA play? Uh, so the Palladium opened in 1940. Uh, the opening night, Frank Sinatra was an opener on the bill. And Not friends, even the closer? Not Old even Blue the Eyes was the opener? Opening. So uh, since then, about everyone's played here. Rolling Stones, Nirvana, Prince, Elton John, Laylee, Jay-Z, Justin Timberlake, Dave Chappelle uh, filmed a special here. So about everything in between. And then last year, EA came in for the first time, transformed the parking lot, the venue, blew it up even more this year. Um, and so now we have this festival here. It's gaming, music, it's a great time. And so <coughs> what is it about EA Play that excites you the most? Um, I just like the transformation of the venue. Uh, we take over the whole block, close down streets. There's thousands of people that come through, have a good time. They have A-list talent that come and play concerts at night. It's a really good time. Well, thank you so much, Dylan. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's a little bit about the Palladium. And now, let's head inside and check out the show. Fun zone. She told me to rap. I was rapping. We're still going. We're not rapping. We're still... I was lied to. Welcome to the Family Fun Zone, my friend. This is where you can get all your real racing action on. It may be a mobile game, but say perhaps you'd like to play a game in a race chair with a steering wheel. There are four stages. Oh. Okay, I'm back. There's a ball pit over here. There's food over here. We're going inside. Let's head inside and check out the show. Yeah, I'm curious about Bethesda's press conference also. Oh, here we go. This must be Anthem. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? So that was Anthem. Yep. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later in the show. But welcome everybody to EA Play. I'm Andrea Renee, and while you might recognize me from the gaming community, I'm kind of a new face around here. So this year, EA wanted to change things up because they know that I'm both a gamer and a fan. So they invited me to come and host the show. And I think this year is gonna be a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you're ready. Because we're about to kick the press conference off. But before we do that, EA Play is more than just the show you're about to watch. Right behind these doors, there is a fan fest outside and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are hundreds of community members from all over the world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions of the games that we're going to be showing off here today. But before we can get to that, we've got some reveals, of course. We're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now, I know Trevor Thank Miller you, Takisri. I appreciate yeah, it. Clap it up. Thousand bits. Last month, but we've got some new stuff to show you today. Then we're going to move on to FIFA 19. And boy, do they have some big news, you guys. Any World Cup fans? You guys excited? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> then we've got two new indie games Hey, to I share, appreciate it. And then it. I'm going to come back towards the end of the show. With some You've of also now nabbed second place and nice bumped Foxbot off the leaderboards. Anthem. And He'll be course, up to that, but that's worth yeah, it. Yeah, we got the woos for Anthem. I'm into it. You want to you do this with me? <laughs> well, wouldn't it be fun, you guys, if I told you all the secrets at once, right? Well, give, give him a break. He needs to just enjoy the show. So without further ado, let's get things started.
Battlefield 5. Or Battlefield Vagrom, take your pick. <clears throat> right, it's time to kick this thing off. It's been two weeks since we read a Battlefield 5. And you know what? It's been exciting, it's been a lot of speculation, and so many brilliant remixes of a revealed trailer. But there's also been lots and lots of questions from the community. And we've heard you, you want to see more gameplay innovations. You want to know how customization actually works, and you want to know more about our take on the Second World War. So today, we'll show you more gameplay and why this is the deepest and most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to dive and smash through windows to surprise your enemies. Where previously defenses were stationary, you will now be able to <clears throat> move these weapons around on the battlefield and gain advantages. Oh, that'll be awesome. Our renowned destruction system is back and more impactful than oh ever. God. So, well, you can't really hide from those pesky tanks anymore as they oh come chasing you forward. Crap. As they rip through those buildings. And you will now be able to customize your soldiers, your vehicles, and your weapons, not only for the gameplay, but for the looks, as part of our portrayal of the Second World War. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in Battlefield 5. You're going to see a lot more of our new gameplay systems here at EA Play from our community. So let's talk about our single player in War Stories. Yes, let's do that. So we want to tell you about those untold stories that got us excited to start with on this game. It's about what you will see is really those moments of wow. human heroism. That's a good shot. It is about witnessing the war through the eyes of the men and the women who shaped the world forever. Real and real and relatable people facing the brutality of war. We started off by an exclusive look at uh, the Nordlis war story over at the Xbox briefing tomorrow. Thanks, that's it. something not to miss tomorrow. Mm. So, our launching of Tease. October is just the beginning. You will all go on an expanding journey to the second world We're probably going to stream that also. No loot boxes, no premium pass. <laughs> <laughs> Every day will bring something new. And huh. as part of that journey, after nope. launch, no you loot boxes, no premium I pass. Wow. What you have been asking for. Mm -hmm. It's Royale. <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> it's we don't need a Battlefield Royale game. Royale reimagined for Battlefield. So we bring those pillars of Battlefield with destruction, team play, vehicles into this new experience. So we will bring you experience that you haven't played before in Battlefield or anywhere else. Yeah, I don't trust this. But it's suspicious there might be learning. Later this year. So with that, it's time to show you what makes Battlefield so special. It's the unmatched intensity of our multiplayer sandbox, and this time, it's even more epic, fighting across multiple maps and modes. Welcome to your next Battlefield experience, and this is your first look at ground operations. And this time, even featuring music. <laughs> In-game footage. Jump! <sighs> Rosebud Angel. It looks good. Let's just hope it stands up to that. Yeah, it is pretty. Also, hi, Donnie. How's your Saturday going?
It looks gorgeous. Oh, God, that must have hurt. That was an airplane prop enema. Hey, Master Chief. What's going on? Get your ankle off the... Get the Zeus! Pretty good, just a relaxing day. Yeah, Nordl Nordless War Story. Tomorrow. Whoop. Next title. Is it football? Or is it football? Yeah, soccer. Football, not football. This is their biggest selling line uh, of game titles. FIFA, I think. And if they've screwed it up the most in the last couple of years. So there might be a revolt if they don't straighten out on this one. Football, yes. It's supposed to football. FIFA 19. This is the part I tune out about a little bit, is the FIFA part. Let me know if it's too loud. I can turn it down. It's quite loud on my end. Yeah. Hey, preacher, what's going on? UEFA Champions League, the pinnacle. Just in time for soccer, football, where the world's best clubs compete, and icons of the game like Gerard and Cruyff cemented their legacies. The world's biggest league joins the world's game. And a special thanks to the legendary Hans Zimmer, and LA's own Vince Staples for collaborating with us on the trailer. And I really love Hans the trailer Zimmer, because wow. it captures our epic vision for how the Champions League comes to life in FIFA 19. And Lena's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. As Aaron said, the UEFA Champions League is an amazing addition for the game. It's where football's biggest heroes like Ronaldo and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where <laughs> champions rise. They uh, and you've been asking for talked about Battlefield 5 or Battlefield B for Vagram. And, and it looks like it could be good. The Champions League across the game. We, this is soccer. We still need to see football. I don't know if there's a baseball. I'm not sure. This trophy in career mode. Alex Hunter will pursue Champions League glory in your story mode, the journey, and in FIFA Ultimate Team, there'll be live and authentic Champions League content. Yeah. We'll share more details on that. I really, I'm, I'm not a FIFA soccer person. Later I like summer. soccer games in the past, but not FIFA soccer. Beginning. As you know, the heart soul of FIFA is gameplay. And this year, we're giving you the tools to control the pitch in every moment, from your tactical approach to the match to each technical touch. Yeah, and in Battlefield 5, they said no microtransactions, no loot boxes, shape and, refine our and no premium pass. With input from our so we'll see. If, that's, if they stick to that, I might buy it. To detailed feedback sessions with FIFA pros. And we're going to be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer, but what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar and gameplay was raised yet again this year. <laughs> I don't know how to use my hands, ball. So we look forward to it is called football for a reason. Experiencing the game on the hands-on sessions this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited for everybody to play it when we launch on September 28th. And that's our FIFA 19 news headlined by the UEFA Champions League. But I just wanted to take a minute to pause and reflect. <laughs> Standing next to this trophy is a little bit surreal. You know... Growing up, there's two iconic trophies that every young player dreams of winning. And for your club, it's this one, the pursuit of Champions League glory. But for your country, it's this trophy, <laughs> the World Cup. 
And with the tournament starting Random in just five injury days, simulator to ball. To compete for it in FIFA That's 18. a good one, Breach. As you can imagine, all of us on the FIFA team can't wait for the start of the World Cup. And we want to celebrate with FIFA 18 players, which is why we've just updated the game with a free World Cup experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country like mine, Iceland. Who would have thought that a nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify? And you can feel their excitement. Those people aren't real. Apologies to any England fans in the room that might still sting. <laughs> And Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there. We want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and on PC through Origin Access. Yeah, you can <laughs> download and play the entire game right now for free. Yeah. So to kick off the trial, we've got some of the world's biggest creators who are going to be playing live at the end of the show, representing their nations in a little mini World Cup tournament. And this summer will bring so much more for FIFA fans. Plenty of FIFA 18 content centered around the World Cup and will bring you all the details on FIFA 19. But in the meantime, <laughs> let's all enjoy the World Cup. Thank you and Auf Wiedersehen! <laughs> It is the big day on the biggest stage at the World Cup. Good morning. EA Sports FIFA 19. You know, the FIFA community never rests. 20 million people from 60 countries playing in competitive leagues this year. Well, the FIFA team never rests either, bringing the Champions League and the World Cup and so much other greatness to FIFA this year. We can't wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome you to EA Play. It's our third EA Play and our second one in Hollywood, and we couldn't be more excited to have you with us to share all the games that we have to show you. We've got lots to do, but before we, get, before we move on, I'd like to share just a couple of things. The greatest disruption to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is the combination of streaming plus subscription. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books has never been easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a pro have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. Uh-oh. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment to extend our thinking and extend our pioneering into this cloud gaming world. For many people, that's going to mean extending the experiences they already play on our partner platforms. For others, it's going to mean new games and new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games extend anywhere, our, extend our wallets. anytime. So this week, we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Now, oh, that's uh, ready for full market on live. Time yet, but it is a promise of what we hope to bring you in the future. Who remembers on live? The second part of that, of course, is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago, and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have full access to a great catalog of games. Today, we're announcing Origin Access Premiere. So three things you need to know about it. Origin Access Premiere will bring you all of our new PC games, starting with Madden NFL, back on the PC for the first time in over a decade. Wow. 
That's a big deal. Then FIFA 19, Battlefield 5, and of course Anthem. And there'll be many more titles in the years to come. Second, you get access to the Vault, our library of over a hundred games from EA well, and other Well, this publishers. on the PC would stream third, it down. You would download it and then access it. Summer. So that's a little later but in the year. But the cloud play they're talking about is right mobile now, devices, which means smaller application sizes. Subscription. Come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Thank you and have a great show. I'll say this, the premiere thing, if it's cheap enough, might be a good way to get into Anthem and Battlefield 5, but I'm not sure. It kind of depends on what the monthly price is. Because I'm interested in Battlefield 5, I'm interested in Anthem for PC. And if Premiere gets you access to all these other games that you could play, that'd be really good for a streamer, because I could just load something up in their older back catalog stuff and mess with it. That'd be good. Also, I do agree with you, Tiki Sri. I don't think the cloud for things is going to be viable until there's much better um, uh, cell phone, wireless data networks. There's Anthem. Origin Access Premiere. Hmm. Coming later this year. Hey, everybody. What's up? So I'm here sitting inside the crowd at EA Play. And I just happened to find Mr. Vince Sampella here in the audience from Respawn. What's going on, Vince? How are you feeling today? I'm feeling great. Respawn I Entertainment. Uh-oh. I love seeing new games. I mean, someone's super excited about that man on PC, right? Yeah. So um, you guys may have seen that uh, Vince was tweeting yesterday. And there has been a bunch of speculation. So yeah, Anthem looks like a Destiny clone. Right but are they going to sure. do it better or worse? I mean, That's the question, Preacher. We're not Preacher. ready to show all of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. The teams are kicking ass. But we wanted to bring a little tidbit. So we've been working with Lucas on getting the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be. And we're going to talk about it right now. Yeah. Oh, Woo. you guys got any guesses? I bet you the, the internet is going wild right now. I hope so. <laughs> So the Star Wars name is Jedi Fallen Order. Woo! So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. So it kind of gives you some idea that you'll be playing a Jedi. So, so does that mean I get to play like, the lightsaber? Episode three yes. and episode four. <laughs> so Vince, you got a, you got anything else? Well, it takes place during the dark times. Aha. I'm trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedi's are being hunted, so. It's going to be spectacular. So for all the, like, the hardcore nerds out there who want to know like, where in the timeline, like, which, between which episodes is it? Between three and four. Okay. All right. Between three and four. That sounds like a nice time. You got it, uh, any other tidbits? No, it's, it's not a nice time. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> Bad time. Does that mean it's going to just be all dark and serious? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think people are now anxiously want to know, like, what, when can we play the game? Uh, it will be holiday of next year, 2019, not this year. So, sorry to dash any hopes. No. <laughs> but now that we know, we can set expectations. We're all going to be amped up. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from more from you maybe, uh, maybe next year. Oh, yeah. Well, Vince, <laughs> it was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Uh, we do have a little bit more news on Star Wars, so I'm going to toss it over to Dennis. Battlefront 2! Hello there. My name is Dennis. I work at DICE in Stockholm on Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm really happy and excited to be here today, so thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. So we launched our game in November of last year, and clearly we didn't get it quite right. So instead of coming out of the gate sprinting like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and make sure that we were delivering the game that our players really wanted. So we decided to completely overhaul our progression system and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for players to collect instead. So from there, we added a new hunt mode inspired by... Battlefront 2 was one of those games I wanted to get into, but they screwed it up. Starting with the Ewoks on Endor. 
That's terrifying, and, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we, um, it turned out to be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building Ewok Hunt. So, as you might know, we're currently in our Han Solo season with content from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by mm -hmm. the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous place, and it features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So looking forward a little bit, this summer we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. Thank God. We're also adding a new Starfighter mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. And looking Battle ahead a little bit more, we will also be delivering a new large-scale multiplayer sandbox experience focused around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out capital ships. They've recycled so the same all, footage twice now. We know that you have been asking Whoop. for new heroes, villains, and planets from a certain era that features a very iconic Star Wars conflict. So I'm excited to confirm that Battlefront 2 this year will be going deep into the Clone Wars. Aha! Uh -huh. It's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis featuring multiple levels including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let me introduce... General the Grievous. Most powerful droid, <laughs> the leader of the most powerful droid army in the galaxy, General Grievous. Yes. And yes, he will be going up against my own personal favorite, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. Kenobi. Ooh. Finally making his debut in Battlefront after all these years. So, but we're, we're not done. That's not it. They will not come alone. Joining them is the Dark Lord and leader of the Separatist Alliance, Count Dooku, as well as someone to bring balance to the Force, oh Obi-Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. Two people will play as Adam... Anakin and his Vader at different points in the game. To be building all of these cool Samuel things. L. Wendu, no. EA and Dice are committed they can't to afford Battle his Front. licensing rights. We had a rough start, but I really think that this game has a bright future. Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this as the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you. May the force be with you, and enjoy the rest of E3. Thanks. Wow. You're right, Preacher. You look like you woke up 10 minutes ago. Kind of wooden, too. Semi-monotone. Okay, I'm not sure I know what this is. Oh, Yarny. It's really good to see you. Uh, in Unravel, we use yeah. yarn to symbolize love and the bonds between people. In our new game, we, we tear that bond up right at the start. You lose everything, including your spark. But when things are at their darkest, oh. you find hope. It's a console exclusive game. I think it looks bond. great, but I, it's one of the things I never invested in because I don't play console games. And it leads you off on an adventure. So welcome to Unravel 2. Yeah. Hoodoo doll overboard. No, not quite. It's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two little souls who refuse to give up and we'll build something new and beautiful together. 
And the whole game is inspired by that spirit of optimism and togetherness. You see, it's Maybe? all made to be played with two characters. You can play it alone, oh. or you can play it in co-op with a friend. That's but good. There's always two characters there sharing one yarn and working together to get through this adventure. This game, it's quite different from the first. It's, it's both friendlier and more challenging, but above all, it's a lot more playful. And, and we think it's a worthy successor. And I want to show it to you now. So I, I brought some help. Uh, so please oh welcome God. Michael to the stage. It's a producer at Coldwood. And we're going to try to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about, about how you can play the game. Live gameplay. This can only go yourself, badly. Essentially. <laughs> so this wasn't prepared. There we are. So when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through the more fast-paced segments of the game. And we actually tried to include a bit more of those, because we figured that since it's a co-op game, we wanted to have more like thrill and danger and kind of wild wow moments. Oh, uh, they're combined right now. Places that were like fun and exciting. It's weird. And then when it you looks get gorgeous to the more though. puzzly areas like this, when you're problem solving, you can split apart into two and switch back and forth between the two characters because that's how we've essentially designed all the problems and puzzles of the game, that you're always working together and helping each other out and utilizing this bond between you to overcome any obstacle that you come across. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump in at this point. Yeah, come join me. So um, I'm going to be the re red one. Okay. You'll be the blue one. I'll be blue. Player one, player two. A little celebr celebratory flip there. And the bird is back. Oops. Okay. Playing, it, playing it safely now. <laughs> Oops. I'll swing. All right. And I'll catch you. There we go. It's an interesting game premise. I really do like it. It's just it's a it's a I pity it's now. console okay, only. You go ahead. Or at least the first one was. It was PlayStation or Xbox only. I can't remember which. Okay, this Maybe is the both. Scary I don't part. know. Do yeah, the the world does look great. Oh, there's some kid in the background. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Buster. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> well done. Okay, I'll I'll go up and distract the grouse. You can. I'll sneak up here. Okay, your your turn. Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> here you are. Keep, what keep the heck? The <laughs> now I'll go. That's funny, I gotta admit. <laughs> now we can breathe again. Yeah, finally. Yeah, it's drop in, drop out, couch co op. <laughs> yeah, basically that's what it is, I think. Yeah, exactly, so Kukus. I'd love to play Horizon Zero Dawn. Down, I'm, I'm not gonna buy a PS4 uh, just for that. And I don't wanna play it on the PS4, I'd rather play it on the PC with mouse and keyboard. Yeah, I, I, I really hope you like it. And. Um, before I go, I just want to send some, some love to the team back home because working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort on so many levels, and everybody has worked This is so the guy hard, that so when he debuted it, I think there, at either Sony or Xbox, and, and I think it was Xbox and conference and a couple of years ago, he was doing the presentation and he started to cry and tear up so much because he was so overwhelmed at the response. Really nice guy. Yeah, see, Takisri says, I, I was loving Horizon, but I want my ke keyboard and mouse so bad, yeah.
And we already saw this, literally. Or at least some of this. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. There's a moose in the background. The environments look amazing. <laughs> I would love to play it. But I don't think it's coming to PC. Thank you, Martin, and the brilliant team at Coldwood. The great, the game is really strong. These guys have done an amazing job, and it's clear that they have a lot of passion. And I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kids. But what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep, you heard that right. You'll be able to take these two Yarnies on their next big adventure starting today. The game is finished, it's out. <laughs> but thank where? Thank you, Martin, and thank you to the team at Colby. Back in 2015, we started on this journey. They never announced platforms. Unravel, to seek out the most creative, independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our way of helping these creators bring their unique games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, if you remember, Joseph Fares was up here on stage representing his team at Haze Light and The Way Out. Yeah. And I think we all kind of remember that. Um, and you might even remember him from the Game Awards as well. I think I did. Anyhow, in March, that game caught fire. It's, it was in it, it's innovative, it's fun, and it's something fresh and new. And you all loved it. We saw over two million players in the first two weeks. And A Way Out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team are expanding and moving into a new studio. So stories like this drive our industry, and it's why we will continue to work with independent developers to help them realize their dreams. Which leads us to our next EA Originals title, from a little game studio in Berlin called Joe My Games. When I met this team and I saw the game, I was instantly drawn to how personal this story was. It's one that tower carries a very powerful and important message. And it's unlike anything we have ever done. So please welcome Connie Gepper to the stage from Joe My Games to tell you more. Oh, about PC. Cool. Yeah, it means we can play it. Thank you, Patrick. I still remember. Um, during the pitch, how enthusiastic Patty was, and that afterwards, like our whole team, including me, were super excited. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> I'm pretty excited, maybe a little too excited. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh. We are Yomai, uh, a small indie game studio from Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude, or SOS as we call it. The whole journey from the very first concept to actually becoming a part of EA Originals is simply amazing. Let me tell you more about our game. When humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. This is at the core of everything you will see, hear, and hopefully feel while playing SOS. What makes this underlying concept so important and so unique is that nearly every human being can at least somehow relate to or remember the feeling of being lonely. In my case, I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. I think as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. 
um, I'm still amazed how like the concept seems to just float out of me like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think this is also why so many people can instantly connect with the game because it's not a made up story even though that it takes place in a fantastic setting. In SOS, we try to show how people experience different kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, and family see those who struggle. We achieve all this in playful ways, so that players who want to simply enjoy a fantastic experience can do so. But player who wants to look a bit deeper can <coughs> reveal a whole emotional world beneath it all. Sea of Solitude is about a young woman named Kay who is suffering from such strong loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside and she becomes a monster. The game is about finding out why this happened to her but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, the goal is to bring all those emotions into balance. Some needs to become bigger, some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace even your destructive part or your self-doubt in the same way you embrace your joy or your hope. This is what being human is all about, and that's what our game is all about. Thank you. Is this real? Finally, gameplay. This world that I live in is empty and cold. The loneliness cuts me and tortures my soul. Wow. I'm no child of destiny and no fortune son. I've just chased you so long now. I'm too weak to run. A new day is here, but nothing is new. Who's the anime guy that did um, uh, Spirited Away? It reminds me of that guy's work. Yeah, that looks amazing. That's like a story playthrough. That looks really cool. <clears throat> yeah, I'm the one. Basketball. But I'm not the only one. Now we go back to nap time. Miyazaki, yes. Miyazaki, it looks like Miyazaki movie. Yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah, Takisha got her. Spelling's hard, man. Spelling is hard. I used to like basketball game, games, but I kind of got bored with them. When I was much younger. Back when you played them on, like, the Sega Genesis and stuff. Yep, exactly, Downey. I liked NBA Jam, but then again, uh, it lit things on fire and you broke the goal. Yeah, I liked some of the more exaggerated uh, basketball games. When they started getting more realistic and started taking some of the more comedy stuff out, My name's Shay Kivlin, a.k.a. Young Kiv. Uh, I, I got bored with them. And yes, they probably are, Grim Tides. Welcome to the EA E3 2018 press conference. You missed Sea of Solitude, really good game sh showing, and uh, Unravel too. Now in his first championship game, looking to accomplish a goal. Third and four, throws it low. T. Y. Drops it. That was a phenomenal read. Yeah. Trini's got the lead. Tegisu's got it right. To 19. I hate losing way more than I love winning. Oh, we have an incredible matchup. It's a rematch. Can I be the one to go? Touchdown, Kev. He throws it high. And young Kev is going to be your champion. You want to get smacked again on TV? <laughs> <laughs> Every face, no. Madden, 18 champion. He's finally done it. 
Madden Bowl. I thought it was basketball. Now we're on football? How you doing? I've been good. You still recovering from that butt whooping? Wow, already starting. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, as you guys can see, king of touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that a lot. Um, as you guys All know, the sports this young balls. Kid, Madden 18, Madden champion. Like, give it up, young kid, y'all. Give it up. I have no clue who that kid is. Young kid. I mean, they've told us, and I still How don't has know. How it been, you know, your success and your path, you know, to where you're at today? It's, uh, I've always been a competitor. Um, when I was in high school, I was playing baseball. I hurt my arm. So then I picked up Madden, and then at first, I was really bad. I was getting blown out online, but I kept at it. I put more and more time into it. Eventually, I made my first tournament, but I had a big decision. It was the same time as my graduation. Wow. Okay. So the key to be the number one player in Madden is to hurt your arm in baseball. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, you said you had the decision to, be to, uh, to go to your graduation or go to the tournament. So like, what did you do? I chased that money. I still got my diploma, but I chased that money. <laughs> there you go. We're out here chasing money. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Now the past two, you know, the past few years, how has it been for you? I know you had some ups and downs. It's been tough. I've had a lot of devastating losses. I've been so close so many times. I made the final on TV and got blown out by all those losses. It made me gain a lot of mental toughness, and that's why I got this belt. That's awesome. I, that belt is so It's called amazing. practice. A lot of, you know, clean <laughs> on that belt for you. <laughs> well, today, EA Play, you know, first look at the Madden 19 trailer. Super excited. It's going to be so fun. It's lit. I honestly wish I could stay right here and talk to you guys forever, but I'm not going to board you guys. We're going to go out. I'm gonna try to take this belt, you know, round two. So we're out. Have a good day. Wow, that was hilarious. Did you see that? He took it's the belt. Life to get to moments like these. Hello, fellow youths. Exactly, preach. You battle through the pain and failure, all just to get to this place. You've been told legends are born. You fall so you can rise. And you rise so that you can truly see. See that it was really never about reaching the end of the road at all. But about all the moments that got you here. Mm hmm More running with ball, ho ball holding. If the next one is hockey or MLB, I'm gonna go microwave some chicken nuggets. Would you let the moment to find you? <laughs> Ten minutes here. Something liven up the boring bit. Cheers. Thank you very much, Dark Preacher. Whew. Please say it's not. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Nathanius, professional shoutcaster, here alongside Redwood Studios general manager, Michael Martinez. Redwood Studios. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah. We're going to do this presentation a little bit differently and give you your first look at a brand new mobile game in a live winner take all head to head match. Uh. Michael, why don't you tell us the rules? Mobile sure thing. Games. The objective is straightforward destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap it, tap the destination, unit automatically moves there. The most efficient way to destroy the opponent's base is with this giant nuclear missile in the center of the map. Control the missile by standing on a majority of the control points. A bar fills up while the missile is possessed. Whoever controls the missile when the bar fills up will fire the missile. It takes two missiles to destroy the enemy's base and win. That's it. I, I, great, I see why they're covering it. It's not... It. Let's get to Entirely this. fair Absolutely. for me to just dismiss it. Right, it's just not my category like sports. Awesome matchup lined up for you here today. Fighting for the blue side of the room. If you could please give a cheer for one of the most formidable RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. Who? Yes. Oh, 
Never heard of him. His opponent fighting for the red side of the room. Oh, the they did make the Command and Conquer. You're right, Grim Tides. Welcoming to the stage, Nick at Night. Who? Old StarCraft player in control. Clash, okay. Yeah, it is. The competitive backgrounds that these players have it should be a great totally. match. It really is. I can't wait. All right. Are the players ready? Let's uh, oh, get God. this thing going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. Let's kick this off. Uh, nice little strategy game for those yes. of you out there. It's a good genre. I'm very excited for this. The players are loading in, and loading we are ready to the kick match. Here we go. This off. As the players' bases have been deployed and the action begins like any strategy. I'll bet you 10 bucks that's a pre-rendered sequence. The guys on stage are just reacting and going along with it. Now the infantry is going to come out to hold that top point. Both players, of course. Those guys aren't spotlighted for a reason. They don't want you to see their finger movements. In a strategy game, that flank position, that in control is going from the top side. Also very important as Nick at Night's forces have to circle around the center. Right, let's see if he's able to create a two-on-one. Is he able to get there? Looks like he's getting there. Here That's comes the, GDI with uh, with uh, Rhino. It's gonna rip up those infantry. Yeah, going for the anti-infantry, and like any strategy game, the units that you're going I, to use. It doesn't even make sense to me. Will what? Have a huge impact. Your micromanagement of your forces and protecting totally. that economy as well. Yep. Nick and Knight with some attack bikes in the top. Defense. There he is. And in control, placing the turret on the top right side to help cover that Rhino as attack bikes move towards the northwest position. Okay. We can see that the missile is beginning to ready. And firing that, that takes out half your base. The most important objective on the map is to hold those control zones. Right, and in control, making a lot of progress to that far right side of the map. The cooldown timers are it's weird. A great job of it's uh, 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 it skips the middle 50%. Sometimes, not all the time. Really freaky. Units come out. We have there the drill pod coming in the left side to help there it is. Those some flame Poop Blake right. says this makes really me feel sad. Tear through those infantry. This is what became of Command and Conquer, Boomplex. Nick at night, Nickelodeon. But it words with you over your call sign, dude. Passing halfway now. Oh, there it is. Zone, two zones okay. in control of Nick at night. He will have the missiles. We see it starts to point towards in control's base. Let's see if in control can get around to that top corner, able to halt that missile. He does contest. Yeah, see, they're showing it from one player's perspective. They're not even showing a general universal, like, spectator view. They're only tapping into one of the phones. Begins to secure the northwest spot. Another tank. Oh, no, there they go. They just unload, unlock uh, parts of the map by moving some troops in. This missile is very, very close. But the player on the left is the one who's uh, controlling the fog of war for the map. They're not even showing a sp central spectator view. One shot away from being knocked out here as the next one will start to ready up in just a Yeah, my thing is, why are they covering it at a press con conference? Mobile games are huge enough that they don't really need to cover mobile games because it's not the right audience. Most people here are either console, majority, or PC, smaller, smaller chunk. As your economy allows you to get these big late game units. If this was a, co a console game, I would understand it, but... But in control, just spreading his forces out, trying to hold this advantage that he's had so yeah. far. Nick at Knight is trying to get in there, but there's a great turret placement from in control, blocking and just ripping through again those infantry. Yeah, <coughs> in control now moving his tank towards this Another crowd. drill pod we're seeing with some flame tanks. Yeah, bring in the flank. Of course, those flame guys do amazing damage to the infantry, help to clean that out. Meanwhile, two more... I just think it's sad out. that they wouldn't oh, even do Nick a Knight spectator view on the game so you could see both sides. Well yeah. with that tank, going for counters trying to scout out and see what your opponent is doing. So I think this is a pre-recorded so game with some name overlays nice thrown onto it. Thinking about harassing those harvesters coming around the far side for those rhinos. Looks like he's really pressing it. And we see that missile is starting to get yeah. close to wow, firing with this. three zones. something between the sports games. I, I kind of think that's all they've got, Boomplex. They're not showing off anything gameplay-wise really revolutionary. They're holding back a whole bunch of it for the Xbox conference tomorrow. Like Anthem and um, Battlefield 5. All that stuff's getting saved for the Xbox conference tomorrow. I don't know, maybe they'll wrap up with con with, with Anthem forces, stuff, but I'm not sure. But uh, Nick at Knight's done a great job of getting map presence and now also harassing the economy of there he control. Is. Yep, wow. Okay, we've got our first mammoth tank on the board. 
If, Nick, if in control can get this in position, he's gonna do. Why can't we see what damage. Nick at Knight's doing? That missile just passed halfway ready. He's also bringing out his first air unit. Wow. Deal with those. A people. lot going on here. It's got a lot of range that big boy. And in control just needs to hold. This down. missile is fire. nearly gonna fire. It can be stolen at any. Where is it gonna go? Is he gonna be able to get it off? He's got it, Max. There Max. it is. He's gonna take it. Defeating Nick at that Knight. That was one. <laughs> that was epic. <laughs> Amazing! Yay. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Any thoughts, yeah. guys? I just came to make mammoth tanks, so I've, I've, I've done my job. Yeah, absolutely. That was Thank awesome. So we much. saw a little bit of everything right there. Perfect. Yeah. Let's hear it for Nathanius, Nick at Night, and In Control. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they're drawing this out to make it more. It sounded more like a hardcore RTS. Conquer, they are, right? yes. Rivals reimagines the real-time strategy experience for mobile. We're giving yeah, see, Redwood Studios. Continuous control there you go. That is so sad. Competitive head -head Redwood is stooped to mobile games. And strategy. At least they're not closed the down. Rivals will be coming to iOS and Android devices. But I'm excited to announce that Android players can play the pre-alpha today. So head to the Google Play Store. Whoa. Conquer rivals. The studio has been having an yeah, please come back to PC. Game, and we please. can't wait for you to play. Please let us know what you think. Thank you. How's that? Yeah, I think they did. I think they're basically trying to cash in on Command and Conquer lore and Command and Conquer fans and hoping those older fans that now have mobile devices will cash in on this. It's probably going to have now, transactions in it. we close the show with a spectacular epic anthem, I wanted to share a few uh -huh. things. I am blessed to be able to work with some of the most creative people on the planet who come to work every day to create yeah, I think you're right, Grim Tides. entertainment. And what I can say about all of those teams and what I can say about us is that we are always trying to learn and listen learn. and strive to be better. And so as you look at the 10 experiences that you're going to see today, and as you play games this week, there's some things we hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice, is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make. And that for every moment that you invest, you feel like you are rewarded and you are given value for that investment. And most importantly, that the games are fun. That we move past the grind and that these are experiences that truly enhance your lives. Thank you. And so as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know that we want to be better and that we want to make great games. And that as much as we love making games, and as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. Oh God. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program, where we show the world how the power of play can be a positive force for show, oh, social impact. This is actually good. Millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in yeah. our games, logging millions of hours in support of Play to Give. And to yeah, celebrate yeah. that, we contributed a total of $1 million to three charities that <laughs> share our vision for a more inclusive world. A world where representation <laughs> and equality are not something we strive for. Skate for Battle Royale. And where bullying uh, I would play that, Boomplex. 
These three organizations, the United Nations, he for she, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center, and Ditch the Label, an anti-bullying organization. Yeah, yeah. All are doing great work, and we're proud to support them through Play to Give. That, and thank you for your support. I'd play Skate Before Battle Royale. Thousands of 100%. us in EA and millions of you be hilarious. doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us, and thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Bring us Anthem! Now, without further ado, let's take a look at Anthem. Better be good, or somebody's going to be in trouble. The gods vanished and left our world in chaos, creating, altering, destroying. The anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever. I have a theory about how this game is going to be structured. We can go over it after it's over. It wants to destroy us all. We still know nothing over what we did yes uh, before today. That's basically an extended trailer from what they've done previously. time I see it. So I know all of you yeah. like me have had I think you're right, questions preacher. about Anthem since last year because we're all Bioware fans. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the rest of the show and we're going to uh. take a deep dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring up some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rootsart. Okay, maybe this won't be a waste of time. Today. So I think yeah, it's going to be mostly right? Destiny, yeah, Destiny 2, exciting. part so Monster Casey, Hunter. We're going to go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So now we know that you all started, or Casey, you started your career at Bioware way back in the day. Yeah, yeah. A couple years off. I think it's going to be mostly a Destiny 2 clone. I really do. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making games for Bioware fans. You know, we have the best fans. Uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it. So the sequences so where you see people jetpacking in suits, CEO, those are load screens. You won't be doing that. It's going to be like the, you know, what is the evolution of a ship flying sequences and from and Destiny 2. To That's my theory. Brand new world for people to discover. You know, a whole new world of story and character. The suits will not be fully customizable. It'll be locked down into classes. More of a dynamic and living world. A game that would change and classes will have limits. We also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with stories sort of bolted on this side, but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story's about you. 
In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Now, you can build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the core of the game. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world, the world is really dangerous. They don't say how long this press mission. conference is. And this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting about this, it's unique for, uh, for Anthem, is that this huh. is a living shared world. So whether there's okay. weather or uh, <laughs> it's nighttime, insane. what we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at a, at a moment is seeing the same thing. Uh, and this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. If you notice, all the, I mission, all the flight sequences to a base, like four are just full-on Superman or, and I mean, Iron Man head-first flight mode. I, turn in my, I think my, those are loading boards, screens. You to get to the area, I then you gain control. My and this I think it's basically Destiny really 2, where your ship swoops in and you teleport and down from the ship, then you can do something. Same thing. Four classes. of a single-player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so that we can add story for years to come. So one of the first things that we hear when um, from it, our community... It sounds like it's going to be more RPG-based. ...play in our worlds when they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age. Players want more story. And so we've designed Anthem in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment with a character that you've grown to love or uh, an event in the world that uh, deepens the lore, or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So, Kathleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, from See? a perspective... See? It's Destiny, player, man. They're going to have a core storyline. Like There's going to be four classes. Like Destiny has three. This will have four. Well, It'll be really one better. for us, um, and not just the writers, but all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for modular players gear, to discover. Modular so armor. At the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind their massive tools. See, that's and gameplay. I think that's gameplay. In constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic monsters. It's a dangerous environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, to be safe in. Yeah. Now, something I think a lot of players out there maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the it's, process it's gonna of creating a game? It's going to be a whole bunch like of Destiny, scratch? a little bit of Warframe, yeah, a little bit of Monster Hunter, Bioware, um, probably a little bit of like, know, really the part like Dragon Age started, or Mass Effect. Page. Um, yeah. So what we try to do is we think about the new experiences that we're trying to unlock for players. So, like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? So, that's where we start. And then, once we think about those things... Um, It'll have a central know, store core line. Power of creating some branching ideas, stories. Games, is that replayable missions, like Warframe. A whole fictional universe that's meant to bring out a certain experience. And then, once we do that... Yeah. Then I, we kind of, it could we still be good. All the rest of the it stuff. just doesn't and sound innovative. ...creatively is to think about, like, principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our new world. And then from there, we can actually go and build out every last detail. Yeah, and yeah exactly. The, uh, unique challenges for Anthem is that it's, We've seen this uh, footage four times now. ...an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, whether the uh, storms, uh, seasons, and um, yeah, it's a really great concept to write for because what it We've seen this three times now. the opportunity to drop into the world almost in real time a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. And that could be anything from gameplay to lore. I mean, the, all of the moving parts in the dynamic world sound really cool the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But even though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes Four. back to your character. So let's talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy beasts. So you are a freelancer. 
uniquely skilled to pilot these exo jet these javelin exo suits and uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you um, but on yeah that, that was what i was going to uh, say grim tide they're the looping Canadians the same segments have, of process uh, of footage in several instances the way they think to weaponize the anthem of creation and so those um, are the different javelins they've only got four suit looks three people of Tarsus. that you can play only four now, I've heard you, call this you can power you can recolor them and, and upgrade is, them is but suit, there's just four javelin? suits like, what's the what's the canon term here we call them javelins and there are four and uh, they each have uh, unique abilities there's rangers ranger and then there's the colossus the interceptor and finally the, the storm, storm. Yeah, so uh, each javelin gives you a different way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is, like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, a pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood, based on the mission you want to engage with, or the, or the javelins that your friends are using. So you create um, a so pilot character really and you can change between any javelin you want. We built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world. So one so character, have their own multiple materials. options, so that's pretty good. Let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. The Ranger is a more general game option, footage. Uh, able to uh, to do a lot of different things. Uh, use really designed for up close and personal combat, uh, one on one for the most part. The Colossus the is heavier, Ranger? more specialized, but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. I want to be a Colossus. I, I'm just gonna say the storm looks like it's gonna be my favorite, and I'm sure you guys out there are picking your faves right now too. Um, so the javelins are awesome. They didn't show footage from the other two classes. Right Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. And the first one is going to be from at It's Sweet Nicole, who asks, as a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? Yeah, so we really want p players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their, their uh, javelin plays, through gear and uh, weapons. It's, it's probably going to have shader packs, like from uh, uh, Destiny 2, well one-use shader uh, packs that you have to get as loot or pay for. We want teams to be able to do this as well. Mm. And because you're going to be using a javelin for a long period of time, we really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up, because actually, uh, Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. Monetization. How, when, loot box, cosmetics? Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So no loot boxes, no ability to pay for power. So that means no ability to spend money on gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. But even more important than that, we want to make sure that Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey. We talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about, you know, the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. So um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. So, you know, I think here we're going to see the, the Colossus, you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay, if we can have a look at that. So heavy oh, artillery God. being really strong, you know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the Ranger shooting down from above. Still just two playable classes. Com you know, combos and special abilities and stuff like that. Well, I'm I seeing melee, you don't just run two around, abilities, two guns. As well. So, so it's interesting because at the Slate Tones wants to know how will you balance multiplayer with single player storytelling. So Anthem is really built around trying to combine the uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just ex experience the story. We it was announced last year, at E3 last year, like this, uh, by yourself, and it looks like it's still not finished. Than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun, even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. It really is Warframe. Okay, it's going to have Warframe with so Arcwing, can, air stuff, and underwater a stuff. More difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your seats. How about we show a little gameplay? Yeah? You guys want that? 
All right, so um, Kathleen, you think you're going to set this up for us? I will. So, um, <laughs> the, you, you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villainy. The Scars have put together an acid-based super weapon, so you've got to take them out. So you start in the Strider, which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. Ah. You have a conversation with your crew, Halleck, Faye, and Owen, and you'll hear Owen. He's going to talk us through the mission as we, as we experience it here. Um, and yeah, then you just get into your javelin suit and you head out with your This friends. is pre-recorded. It's not live right. gameplay. Well, thank you so much, Mark, Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me about Anthem today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. There you go. This was pre-recorded. Pre it's scripted, so... There's the walker. Freelancer, time to get to work! Faye said these bastards made some kind of acid to using it as a weapon. So... Find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. Yeah, see, you got freeform blight, kind of. Some frames can hover, others can just and fly, others can just fly and land. That's it. Owen, what's the plan here? Picking up loads of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. I expect what they're going to do is you're going to have a very short list of pilots you can choose from and pilot voices to choose from. It's not going to be endless combinations. Yeah, see? They still don't have right. anything more than a hunter and a colossus in the group. Two Colossus, one Hunter. It's not a good sign. That means there's two classes that aren't even finished yet. Yeah, the jetpacks are probably going to have a cooldown. Where are they going? I have no clue what's going on. There's a shaker relic. Wait, something's odd. Get a closer look, would you? You see those radiant pieces of energy? They're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Loads of scars nearby. Be careful. Yeah, this is very heavily edited. This is not gameplay footage. Plus, a lot of this stuff I've seen before. They're just narrating over it now. Okay, that's the Stormbringer, or whatever it is. The Elemental. So they do have a mix of all four. Silence. Disaster averted. Hey, Black Knight, right at the end. Wait, something's happening. What the hell was that? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it. We should find the source. Change of plans. Kill everything. Yeah, it's about three seconds. They're showing bits of the mage. They are. So it, it, it's at least playable somehow. They're just not showing it off a lot. Same. 
That was very heavily edited. That wasn't really game footage. Not really. I'm not impressed with Anthem. It just, it does not fill me with confidence. Yeah, and that, was, uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I'm sure the question I never was. Oh, it's a mind. demo mission, maybe. When do we get to play? So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019, on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So mark your calendars, everybody. For that is a long week. time away. Thank you so much again to Casey and the entire Bioware team. I know you guys have that awesome theater outside, so I will see you guys there. All right. Give it there. up for Casey Hutchins, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at their studios back home around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, some of what you saw today, you guys have to wait to play. That's you almost two years so they've been working on it. Right More, now. actually. Now, for those of you keeping score, you can get your free trial of FIFA 18's World Cup today. And Andrew told us about the free trial of Origin Access. Yarny is back with a buddy in Unravel 2, which is also available today. Plus, you can take on your friends in Command and Conquer Rivals starting today as well. Now, that's a lot of, a lot of available stuff that's out today. Is anybody ready yeah. to go home and download anything? No? You're like, I just want to go outside into the fan fest. I get it. I get it. Whoa. So, uh, I want to let you guys know to keep your streams going because in just a few moments, the FIFA 18 World Cup Live Tournament is going to begin. I'm going to head outside and check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down to EA Play today and watching the press conference, and have a great weekend. <laughs> <laughs> There's the wife. Hello. <laughs> okay. Yep, I'm muting you. We're going to face cam now. Hi, everybody. Thank you for sitting with me in on the EA Plays live press conference for 2018 E3. Uh, so far, everything I've seen right now, I have no confidence in Anthem. It looks like it's not even halfway done yet. And the parts that are done looks like it's a mashup of like a little bit of Halo with a whole bunch of uh, Destiny 2 and Warframe mashed in. Maybe a sprinkling of a couple of other games. That's it. And it's not really, it's not filling me with confidence. Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not competent on Anthem. The things I did see that amazed me, Sea of Solitude looks great. Uh, Yar the, the whole Unravel and Unravel 2, I didn't know those were on PC, so I need to see if I could maybe get those and start playing through them with somebody. I'll do the first one by myself and then see if I can get somebody to come in on the second one. That'd be nice. Um, and what was the other game? See if so oh, Battlefield 5. I'm optimistic about Battlefield 5. I think it looks pretty interesting, especially if they're not doing pay to win, they're not doing loot boxes, and they're not doing microtransactions or season passes. If it's just a title, I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, Battlefront 2, I'm still apprehensive about. I don't want to invest in it. But I do think it looks kind of fun now that they've overhauled it a lot and they're adding more content to it. So I don't know. We'll see. Unraveled looks great, and the other one, and the other one after that, yeah, Sea of Solitude, SOS. I think SOS looks amazing. It looks like you're playing through a Miyazaki movie, and that intrigues me a lot. It's very visually pleasing. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be really, really good. Uh, I hope. 
all you wonderful people um, had some fun with me here. What what kind of what kind of stuff are you guys looking forward to? Uh, do you have interest in any of the sports titles? Battlefield Vagrom got to play with Green Army Men. Yeah, I I think it's funny that it's Battlefield Five, but they're doing V, which means I could do Battlefield Vagrom. I, I I'll readily admit that's one of the few reasons that I actually want to get into it. Um, the doors got left open. We have a cat now. Great. Um, FIFA World Cup played them all since '97. Really, Boomplex. Okay, so you're interested in the FIFA side of things, but we're soccer fans over here. Yeah, yeah. By the way, it's it's actually England's fault that America calls it soccer. England started calling it soccer to be different, to change the name off of football and get unique branding, and then they gave up after a few years, and it had already been introduced to soccer over here. And we just kept calling it soccer. So, naughty naughty. Um, have a great weekend, Vey. I'm off to make foods. Meow. Okay, bye, Donny. Um, there is an Xbox conference tomorrow. Let me bring up what's going on where. Um, E3. E3. Okay. So that's it for today. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. No, 3 p.m. my time. Tomorrow at 3 p.m. is the Xbox E3 conference. And then um, at 8.30 is the Bethesda conference. I'm... I, I'm going to watch the Xbox one because they do actually have PC crossover stuff there. But I'm also going to probably do the Bethesda one. I'm definitely interested in the Bethesda conference. So I might do two short streams tomorrow for the conferences there if you want to come back. Um, stay tuned. Yeah, it's going to be 3 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. my time. So yeah, I think that's going to be really, really cool. Um... Beyond that, let's see. On Monday, there's going to be a Square Enix conference. Eh. There's also going to be a Ubisoft conference. I want to tune in for that one. Inside Xbox. I don't know what's the difference from that in the Xbox E3 briefing. PC Gaming Show. This is all on Mixer. I'm not sure. I think Inside Xbox and PC Gaming Show are theirs. So, but yeah. You a PC exclusive gamer. I don't have a console right now. I have an Xbox 360 that I really can't use anymore because they made total overhauls to the uh, dashboard, and I didn't really use it for gaming anyway. I used it as a media thing. I generally don't work well with the controllers because I didn't really... I mean, I grew up on older-style controllers, but there were never any first-person shooter kind of games back then. It was all side-scrollers and jumpers and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah... We tricked you into calling it something stupid, then we ran away, says Boomplex. LOL. That's okay, Boom. You still haven't convinced us that metric is a good system. Nice try, Preach. Um, yeah, Black Knight, uh, I'm, I'm, I would, I've been interested in getting a console if I had the money. That's usually the key. I don't have the money at any given point in time. If I had the money, I would be interested in getting it and hooking it up and doing some game capture. At this point, however, I would probably not get an Xbox. I've been an Xbox fanboy for a long time. I would probably not get an Xbox, though. I'd probably get a PlayStation because they've got better titles. They've got a better interface. And their PlayStation All Access monthly thing, you get better free games. So, eh. Um, stone as a measurement of weight is dumb and confusing. I still don't understand stone, but... We'll get there. Um, it probably makes more sense if you're using me metric as a base and not imperial, but whatever. Yeah, um, I I used to be a big Microsoft slash Xbox fan. Um, if I had tons of money, I would get both. But in terms of if I had to pick one right now and I was going to use it for specific purposes, I would get a PlayStation because it's actually got a Blu-ray player in it, among other things. Yeah, nope, it makes no sense at all. Trust me, says Grim Tides. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to do a, uh, probably a live stream tomorrow at 3 p.m. my time and then another one at 8.30 my time tomorrow to follow these because I need to start paying better attention to these kinds of things on what games are coming out and what things I want to get into. If I was going to skip one, it would be the Xbox one tomorrow. I might just watch that and then live stream the Bethesda conference. I don't think there's going to be anything that's going to affect me greatly on the Xbox conference. So, eh. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, bought a PC for Fallout 4 before I had a good PC, keep bu kept buying PS4 games 
Because they look really good, the exclusives, I mean. Spider-Man is going to be so awesome. I think it's going to be a good game from what I've seen, yeah. So, okay. That's going to be it for this live stream. No more live streams for today because there's no other press conferences for today. I will do at least one tomorrow, Bethesda, tomorrow evening. Um, I'll put some times in the uh, social feed down below the uh, uh, video area here on Twitch. I really like that feature. If I do decide to actually do anything, keep your eyes there and I'll, I'll put some times in. Otherwise, I'll see you folks later. Have a good one. Thank you for stopping by.